next couple of minutes is so uh, I want to pray in tongues, but I want you, I want to take one of the letters. So I, I have started this before and then I kind of faded away from it. But what I want you to do is I want to, I want to start with Aleph and literally, literally just take three minutes. And uh, if you don't know what Aleph looks like, um, if I make it bigger, there's the early as an ox head. Yes. Right. And then uh, that's really the idea of this is the ox head is the leader. Um, if you understand what, what the Aleph is all about, it is the strength and it's the stillness of the inner connection that, that we have to, to earth and heaven. Aleph is the one of two letters that do not have a quiet sound, a, a unique sound. It takes uh, on a, word, a, a, a vowel a sound, but it is considered to be silent. So it's, it's not one of the letters that you can use, if that makes sense. It's like if I say like Gustav, um, it's not a Gustav, G-U is, a, is a, a vowel. It's not, we wouldn't be part of the a, a Hebrew alphabet, you know. So if I take my name, it will be Gimel and Shin and Taf and Vav. The Aleph wouldn't be in here, although it will be silent if it is in there, if that makes sense. I don't know if that made any sense. <laughs> <laughs> But I want you to look at, see this letter, let it, let it kind of just go into your system. The Aleph is one of the most powerful beings when it comes to teaching us uh, about our leadership, about headship, about governance. Yes. And I know that we don't always understand this, although I've done so many times, but I know that we don't always understand it. But what I remember, and I've seen Ian do it, and I've listened, I've actually, last night, myself and um, Leslie went through the whole hour and a half of praying in tongues over each one of these letters. You know, just attaching them to your DNA. That's the whole point of it. And so what you want to see, if you want to see the, see the ox head literally melting into your DNA while you're praying in tongues. So that that dimension of leadership and strength, that portion of governance that you need and who you are as a son of Yahweh can be added to your being. How you guys feel about that? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. Okay, Thank so. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep on praying, listen to this. Aleph is a strong leader, bears our burdens and moves obstacles out of our path. He does this to lead us to glory. Aleph is made of two yards and above and begin the two worlds and, and, and begin the two worlds of above and below with a peg to so bring it together, to connect it. Vav is the point. Aleph creates with intent and reveals to us the creation process of the breathing with intent. He leads us into our legislation from our seats in Zion. From the seat of responsibility with the ox face, we begin um, the heavenly glory. We bring the heavenly glory of Yahweh to bear in the earth. Aleph is the power of silence. It is where true strength originates. It carries the burden of trust. It doesn't shake its first in the its first in the air and demand to be heard. It is just without saying a word. Aleph reveals the deepest of emotions and unmatched authority. Aleph is the fullness of Yahweh. It is the leading, his strength. It is his leading, it is his strength, it is his breath, his promise, his fulfillment, his plan. His... And especially his love. In Aleph my journey begins. And in Aleph I find the completion of his word in my life. In Aleph I am a royalty. I am seated and adorned with the crown of Allah. Let this attach itself to your DNA strand. 
I want you to take a deep breath in. Remind yourself that it's about the breath of the spirit man. It's the breath that frames when I'm speaking in, in, in tongues. I know I have said this many times, it's not a language. It's a frequency that I'm releasing. It is the, the fire of my spirit forming and framing the blueprints of the heavens into the earth. It is the gate what, that, that opens for me to go into that level of, or uh, that dimension of frequency. It is that portion of what Yahweh has given us by being full with the Holy Spirit that enhances us, that grows us, that matures us, that shifts us, that pray, prays prayers that we don't understand, that brings us into alignment with the full measure of who He is. The Aleph is attached to your DNA. Let it grow, let it shift you, let it begin to open you up for the next level and phase that Yahweh is taking you into. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, my King. This evening I ask, Father, that you'll open up our hearts. There's so much uh, regarding your gospel, Father. There's so much regarding your word that we haven't touched yet, but there's so many things that we've heard over the years so many times that needs to be reheard, that we need to hear again because we heard it wrong or we, it was taught wrong or something in our hearts went uh, shifting or it didn't align, it didn't quite perceive it, it didn't quite receive it right. We might have misunderstood certain things, Lord. I've spoken to so many sons and daughters in our faith that, that believes wrong, that has a perception and a view that, that it's not directly from your heart. It might come out of your word, but it's only a very small portion of the word, so it's not the full measure of the truth. Ask, Father, that as we step into the fullness of Yeshua, that you will begin to open us up for a measure of truth that will lead us into all of who you are. Take us on a journey to understand uh, the, the full measure of what you've released and revealed to us on that cross. Yeshua, your blood that covers us is the gateway into all things. It is what shifts us, it's what propels us, it's what teaches us, it's what guides us. It is what completely and utterly renewed us, giving us a new life, a re restoration, complete and utter restoration. And we want to honor and praise and worship and magnify you, my King. You are majestic. Thank you. Thank you, my King. Amen. Amen. It's, it's good. You guys can see me, right? Yes. I can almost see most of you. Because what I'm going to try and do tonight, I want to I go... I know I've taught this before, but I know that every time I teach something, it goes to a new place. And I know that because, you know, as we grow, we, we shift. And we have to remind ourselves that revelation is constantly moving. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a river. It's not a Bible or a dam that's standing still. Right. It's not old rotten water. It's a continuous flow of life. Yeah. And Yahweh is, like I said this before, He just needs to turn one degree. And everything we knew about Him previously has to have an addition to it. Mm. Which means we might have had a measure of the truth today, but tomorrow we might need another, another measure of the same truth. And then it changes the original understanding we had about that same truth. Yes, That's good. And you have to remind yourself that every time you grow and mature, you can read a scripture uh, for a whole week every day, memorize it and know it. And by the end of the week, you've grown so much that if you read it again, it means something else to you. Yeah. We have to also understand that there's measures to the word that we've never had before, and now that we have it, it changes us and shifts us into different dimensions yes. of who Yahweh is. Yes. But it also takes us on a journey where we have to have a greater faith in Him, yeah. but it's not the same faith. It's not the same faith that I had on this side of the veil. 
Uh, this side of the veil of faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, this side of the veil, I walk with faith. I climb into faith. Walk is in me, through me, by me, next to my side. It engages with me. It speaks with me. As a matter of fact, it says it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live, I live by His faith. Yeah. That's yes. another dimension of faith. It's not my own faith. It's not faith that comes by the yeah. hearing of the word. It's faith that I now gain because I'm in a different realm. I'm in a place where I don't have to say to myself, I trust you, Lord. Because I know you love me. I believe that you love me. I believe that you want the best for me. I believe that you want to increase me. I live in a realm where I can see he wants the best for me. Yes. I live in a realm where I can see him, touch him, feel him. It's a different place. I don't have to believe that he's real. I know that he's real. I know without a shadow of a doubt that he's my father. He only wants the best for me. And we have to get to that point in our understanding. And then, of course, we, uh, I, want to, I want to kind of talk about the covering and Yahweh's, the blood of Yeshua being our covering. And what does that do for us? What is that opened up for us? Why is it such a key to our faith? Why is it so extremely important for us to, to realize what the blood has done? First of all, I want to remind you, the blood is what sets you holy, pure, set apart. Yes. Spotless, blameless. The blood is the reason why in the Old Testament the Father said, I can no longer look at you. I have turned my face because of your sin. Mm. And the blood is the reason why the Father now stares at you non-stop. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That's why I can become friends with him. That's why he loves me in case. Well, not that he didn't love me before. But you have to understand, sin was in the way. Now, again, we have to understand what sin is. It is literally... Jesus didn't die for 20,000 different sins. He died for one sin. Mm. One sin. Well, that's just one tiny little sin that caused all the chaos. That was Adam and Eve's disobedience by the tree. That was it. I said this before. If I take a rock and I throw it in the water, the rock sinks to the bottom, but the rippling effect carries on for miles. So when Adam and Eve said, well, yeah, we are, well, you're right. We, if we eat of this fruit, we're going to become just like God. Instead of understanding, well, we are just like God because He created us in our image and decided to do the one thing He asked them not to do. Mm. It opened up a gateway for all kinds of things to come into the way to block that focused place, that, that target place I have. So the restoration that the blood brings, it eliminates the fact that I made that decision. Right. It eliminates that out so it brings complete restoration to me. Which means it takes me back before Adam and Eve ate of the tree or of the good of knowledge and evil. Now, the problem we have in the church today is that although we are restored, we don't understand what the blood did. Because we don't understand what the blood did, we think that it's about this sin and that sin and this sin and that sin and I have to try and stop this sin and that sin and this sin and that sin so that I can be more holy. Instead of understanding that it was one sin that's been eliminated and it can no longer have an effect on me because I'm restored back into that position just before we ate of the tree. Right. And of course now we're still in that place where we can eat of the tree of life <coughs> in its full measure and there's no Satan to bring a temptation to us in that realm. No. Because he no longer has the right to be there. He no longer has a place to come in. Because the only way that I can come in is through Christ. And he does not have access to Christ in that way. That means that I'm restored. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I don't look restored. You don't look, you know, there's still issues. There's still frustrations. And we still do all the things that we do that sin according to what the, the church has told us. But if you begin to understand that sin is not a thing, it is a way of life, and that we no longer live that way of life, yes, Lord. Yes. then you understand, well, I have no more sin, I'm no longer a sinner, I'm no longer sinful, sin no longer has a hold, take me out, sin no longer has a right to me, sin no longer have a hold on me, yes. I am free yes. from sin. Because the sin that brought me to this place has been completely and utterly annihilated. And I am now covered by His blood. And the covering is what opens up the gateway and the doorway for me to go in to where He is. To see Him, touch Him, feel Him, to walk with Him, to engage with Him. Because I was kicked out of heaven because of what we did. 
but because of the restoration, I have access back in. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I, we have to understand that Yahweh is calling a people that understands this. Glory. Now the blood, uh, the covering of uh, the, the blood is a covering to bring you to a place where you are in the kingdom order. And we have to understand the kingdom order is, is not quite like it is here in creation. It shifts us. It, it, it takes me to a higher place. Mm. You know, I, yes, I have to go through the evangelical side of my face. I have to be walking with a pastor. I have to be with a teacher. I have to be with a prophet. I have to be with an apostle. But once I've been with all those five and they've done what they were supposed to do, they have trained me in ministry, then my responsibility from there is to shift into my father's house where I become a son, a mature one. Where he leads me into my priesthood and he begins to show me the power that I carry as one in his image, as one with his likeness. Yes. And he begins to teach me how to be a king, how to literally, like the Aleph, how to put my feet on the earth, with my head in the clouds or in the heavens and govern all that he's given me. Yes. And I have to remind myself that in all of this I'm an oracle. I'm one who speaks out of the mouth of Yahweh into creation. I have to remind myself that I'm a legislator. Right? This is, that's the order. But in all this, he's desiring a company of people that will engage the seven spirits. That will understand that I am a king, I am a priest, I'm a legislator, I'm an oracle, but I need to be trained, I need to be equipped in all of these things so that I can mature in them, in them and begin to understand my position and take my position and do the things that I need to do. Yes. Yes. And in that understanding, it opens up the gate. Also, I have to have the revelation that the seven spirits is not the Holy Spirit. The seven spirits is at the throne, Holy Spirit's on the throne. Yes. And if Holy Spirit's on the throne, the seven spirits is by the throne, then there's seven spirits that I can engage. That doesn't take from Holy Spirit or from Yahweh or from Yeshua. Doesn't take from me in any way, fashion or form. Doesn't expect me or ask for worship in any way, fashion or form. If they do, step out of your shadow court and go back in. Yeah. Always. We have to remind ourselves that Yahweh is a life giver, not a life taker. Right. If you in any way, fashion or form has to or, or, or ordered by any uh, spirit being that you're engaging to either give you worship or to take something from you, you need to step out because that's not how the Father works. No. Because in my own house, I don't pay for the food. The Father does. So when I'm in my own house... And one of the servants come to me and say, you need to pay for what I want to give you. Not realizing, well, my, my brother actually already paid for it on the cross. I have his blood that covers me. I'm from another dimensional realm. You should see it. If you don't see it, then I have to step out of that shadow court where a demonic entity wants to kill, steal, or destroy, and take from me to go back into the uh, desired place. Yes. That's why we have discernment of spirits. Right? That's why I don't get deceived. When I say I, I don't mean I. I, I always, there's always a measure of deception in everybody. Don't, don't, don't think twice of yourself. <laughs> like we always have small little issues, small little things that we say. I sometimes say something and I'm like, oh, that's not exactly how I wanted to say it. But it was such a small nugget. I hope no one goes and meditates on that small little portion and thinks, what did you say that? <laughs> so sometimes I say something and I'm like, hmm. That is not really how I wanted it to come out. But I speak so fast, I can't go back and change it. So it just has to kind of make sense eventually through the soap, or through the pipeline, right. through the soap line. <laughs> See, it's the Father's desire for us to engage because it changes us. Yes. The seven spirits will never take from Yahweh. It will always take you to a deeper place of relationship and intimacy. Mm. Always lead you to a deeper place in Him because their function is only but to teach you about your position. Right. right? If they're teaching you about anything else, step out. You know, the plumb lines, it's very simple. It's very simple, these plumb lines. Any engagement you have, and that is being in the Father, in the Son, in Holy Spirit, Rocha Ganesh. And those are the nine plumb lines. We know them by now. It is, the Holy Spirit is righteousness, joy, peace. If I'm in an encounter and there's no righteousness, joy, peace, step out. If, if there's no way, truth, and life, step out. If there's no justice, judgment, and holiness, step out. Now again, in the same breath, I know that we have a glitch in the download. I read something by a very, very, very famous preacher that I would love to go like this with. <laughs> yes, do it. But not because he is uh, bad or ugly or terrible or pre 
doing something, anything wrong, but he said something that annoyed me so much. He said, I'll stop talking about, I'll stop saying everything is demonic once everything stops being demonic. Ah. No, no. Oh. no. Why don't you sit down before you hurt yourself? Okay, right. you know, let me tell you something, everything is not demonic. That's right. That's right. There might be demons everywhere, but when there's a sun, every demon goes hey. down. Glory. And I know, we, I, know we, I know we don't see it like that, and I understand that we don't, but it's different species. Right. You know, when someone comes in that has authority over dogs, they don't attack him. Have you ever noticed that it? it's like a, someone that has the ability to work with dogs? You look at these dog trainers. I mean, the most vicious dog, he just bit his owner's child, just went crazy. When this guy walks in the room, it's like, sit. And that dog sits. Right. And if he doesn't sit, he puts his head on his head, his foot on his head. Have you ever seen them do that? Because it's a dog, it's a dog thing. Right. You know, it's, it's either he puts his foot on the paws or he puts his, um, he puts his finger into his neck. He does some submission hold to this animal. And it's like he just has no power. He realizes, I'm in a different species' hands right now, and I cannot continue to act like a dog. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We have to begin to understand who we are. Yes. And that there isn't just demons everywhere. Although they are there, when we enter into a room, they have to leave. They have to. They cannot hang around. Why? Because first of all, I carry the presence of my God, and in His presence is a hundred million angels. So wherever one of us go, there's a hundred million angels. Whatever gateway we've opened because of who we are as sons, when that door, doorway opens, the heavens come down. And I know we don't always see that as a truth, but we have to begin to realize the power that we carry as sons. The only reason we see demons everywhere is because that's all we know how to look at. It's funny because I just see angels everywhere. I never see demons anywhere. Oh, well, but just you don't look with the right eyes. I'd rather keep looking with the eyes I'm looking with. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Yes. <laughs> you know, when, when you understand the covering of the blood of Yeshua, you get to engage the angelic realm. Thank you, Lord. And I love the angelic realm, actually. I've talked on it several times. But they are such a typical part of our engagement, of our relationship with Yahweh. They are literally there to teach us, to, to bring messages to us, to help us in our function. To bring us the blueprints, to bring us, yes. bring us scrolls yes. of what needs to be done in creation, yes. parts of, of what we are called to, things that we have yes. uh, opened ourselves to and we agreed before we were sent into the womb. Yes. It's Yahweh calling the people that understand, even when we engage with the four living creatures. And I've shared this before, but one of my encounters, and, and it's funny because I listened to a lady preach and, and she had this encounter. And I said, Lord, I want that encounter. I want to go do that. Uh, it wasn't even an hour later, I was engaging the exact same thing, and the exact same thing happened to me. Come on. Wow. And you know, after it happened to me, everything changed. Wow. So I'm, I'm in the, at this conference in um, Tennessee, and it's not, it's not an up year conference. It's not like what we're doing. It's a little bit old school, but it wasn't too old school. I love the, I love the man who was leader of it. I absolutely am crazy about him. He's a beautiful soul, a powerful man of God. And I remember going there for a three-day conference and I was fasting. Uh, I was, so it was kind of weird for me to be there because they were having lunches and they were doing all these things and I was very committed to this fast. So it's a 21-day fast that I usually do in the beginning of every year. Um, I don't quite do it like I used to in the beginning, but that specific year I was doing it very strictly. Basically what I do is I just drink, I just eat, uh, I don't drink anything, I don't eat anything, I just eat, I drink protein shakes and water, that's it. I can't go without protein. I help with you. And my faith isn't there yet. Right, but anyways, I do protein shakes. And that's not a very good idea if you're driving back from Tennessee to Louisiana because I literally stop every five minutes to pee. It's like if this bladder goes full one more time, Lord, I'm going to rip it out. Because it didn't work and I didn't rip it out. Thank you, okay. Jesus. But it was very annoying. But I remember being at this conference and it was really nice. I was a little bit annoyed, but it was nice. And I'm engaging, and I'm engaging, and I remember this, uh, this vision that um, this lady had, and it was intriguing me. I, I wanted it because I've, I've seen these beings in the heavens many times. You know, I've, I've sat around the throne, and they were always there. But the four living creatures in this engagement just came, and they almost like snugged around me. And they began to put their eyes on me as they were hugging me, and it was, you know, it's weird. It was pretty weird. It was touching my, I could feel it on my body. And it was just holding on to me, and the eyes were moving inside their wings and touching me. 
And while it was happening, I was engaging, uh, and all of a sudden my eyes opened like, I opened my eyes, it wasn't a dream or anything, I literally opened my eyes, and as I opened my eyes, what I was engaging in the spirit with my eyes closed was still right there in the vision. Wow. But my eyes were open. And so engaging with the four living creatures literally shift my, my view of, of engaging, my, my way of engaging to a more and a greater reality. Come on. You know, so it's un understand, we have to understand that Yahweh has opened up this dimension for us because of the blood. Because of that being fully restored, I get to go in, I get to go do it. The same with the living letters. You know, the living letters, although it sounds like an alphabet that I should learn, I, you know, Aleph, Bay, Gimel, Dalit, Vav, it's, it's something, or Hey, then Vav, we, we want to kind of like learn it like that and say, well, it, it's, it is the first letter and it's the 22nd letter. Later, I think we've got 24 letters now. 24, yes. But in reality, each one of these letters are a being, a living being that you can engage. As a matter of fact, the way I see them is as fiery gates. Right. And I would, I would engage my father. And I know this might not be 100% the way it is, but for me personally, the first time I saw these living letters was when I was uh, receiving a hug from my father. And that's, uh, have you ever seen um, the movie... Help me, Jesus. This, this might not work out too too well for me. Um, aliens versus monsters, oh, no. or yeah. monsters versus aliens. It's a cartoon. Okay, so in this cartoon, there's this one thing called Bob. It's just a blue jelly thing that accidentally came to life. No one knows how. Some chemical explosion that caused this about six foot or, or eight foot being to become come alive. So it's this jelly being and he's so friendly and he's so kind. He has no brain. I guess maybe that's why. And um, so what he does is he goes to hug Susan, this, this giant lady's mom, which is a normal sized woman. And as he hugs her, he swallows her. She goes into his being. And now she's in there and then, uh, you know, she kind of freaks out and Susan freaks out and then he just spits her out. But I remember when I hugged Yeshua, when I hugged the Father for the first time, that's exactly what happened. I went into him. But when I went into him, it wasn't, oh no, I can't breathe. It was like, oh my goodness, this, I can breathe. It like, felt like I could breathe for the first time in my life. Yes. And then it wasn't just I'm being in my, I mean, my Father it was a whole other kingdom, a whole other realm, a whole other dimension that opens up. And in this place is where I found the living gates. The living letters. It's there where God would say to me, you need to take each of these beings and bind them to you until you know them personally. They are not just letters. They are living creatures that I've sent into creation for you to understand my word. And so it's important for us to engage. And that's why, you know, sometimes we, I heard people say so many times, so many, so many people have talked to me about this. You know, don't change the name of Jesus to Yeshua. It's not real. It's, it's not a real name. I said, well, I'm not changing the name Jesus to Yeshua. The Hebrew letter doesn't exist. There's no J in the Hebrew language. And his family was Hebraic. They could never have called him Jesus. So and I'm not saying that he, we can't use the name Jesus. We better be able to use the name Jesus because I've got a tattoo on my arm. Right. You know, it, <laughs> but it's, it's the frequency in the name. It's got nothing to do with what you call him because we've made it everything. We've made it about what we call him, but we're beginning to realize it's not about his name. It's about being in him. So if we understand the Hebrew. So when he was talking to the, the Hebrews and saying, you must pray in my name, they understood what he meant because they're Hebrew. Right. They understand how the priest would went, go into the, the name of God. He went in beyond the veil. He went into the yad heh vav -Hey by going, yad hey vav hey. Then he steps into the name. That's what he meant when he said, pray in my name. Step into my name. Go into the Yad, Hey, Shin, Vav, Hey. Step into the fullness of my name because that's where the power is. Wow. That's what these letters are meant to open up to us and open up for us. You know, when I enter in, I begin to understand. And that's the desire the Father has. When we realize what the blood has done, it's opened us up to go into all these different places, to yes. go into the multiple realms that is available to us as sons and daughters. Now, I know that we don't understand it because we are so mind, so earthly minded, we're so fleshly minded, we're so soulish. And I, I say all those things and none of them are bad. <coughs> I know we think, we think our flesh is bad, but when Paul talks about the flesh, we have to begin to understand that he's not talking about my physical body. 
I mean, if he's talking about my physical body, then I don't want to. I don't want to hear him anymore because that's trash. But it's not the physical body. It's, it's obviously not. He's talking about the fleshly desires. You know, the things that the flesh runs after. It doesn't make my flesh bad. Just like a goat, it's not evil. Just like a snake, it's not evil. Just like the number six, it's not evil. Just like money, it's not evil. Hello? Right. Right, it's, it's uh, what we do with it. And I mean, if I take a goat head and shake it in the air because it looks like a pentagram, it, it, the goat, it, 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 that's nothing for the goat. But I mean, the goat's not evil. I used to have a goat as a pet, Bella. It was the cutest little thing. And people say, why do you have a goat? You're a pastor. And I'd be like, what? Are you stoned or are you talking to me? Because that just makes no sense to me. Like, like seriously, well, I'm a Christian. I have a snake. Ooh. What do you think is going to deceive me when I'm under the tree? And also the whole skull thing. I had people say, how do you preach the gospel when you're wearing a skull on your t-shirt? <laughs> you know you have a skull, right? <laughs> you know that in your, underneath your skin is a skull. I, mean, I don't know why you think the skull's evil, but hello. hello. You have a skull. <laughs> and if it represents death to you, it represents death to me too. Death of my old man. Amen. Not my dad. The old guy. <laughs> Help. You know, the Father wants us to understand that we can engage the saints of old. That's great. <clears throat> yeah. And that's not something we understand. Because we call it necromancy. Ah. You know, are oh, you speaking to the dead? Well, there's no such thing as anything dead in the heavens. Now, if you really believe that you die when you die, then, well, congratulations, you're a retard. <laughs> because you don't. You're an eternal being. You can't die. I mean, if you understand that if I'm truly created in this image and this likeness, when I die, I'm still alive. Thank you. Yep. Now, I either go to hell or I go to heaven, and that choice is pretty simple, except Christ is your Savior. I mean, it's not rocket science, it's but it's not exactly how he meant for it to be. I mean, that's that's the church language, and I don't particularly want to put it in the church language no. because there's way more than that to it. That's right. Because let me tell you something. Then we talked to someone. I mentioned someone mentioned a little bit on Sunday, and I was like, Bleh. because I didn't say the sinner's prayer with him. Oh. Oh. He might not be saved. Oh. Let me tell you, you don't get saved when you say the sinner's prayer. You get saved when you make a change in your heart. <laughs> now you can sit and listen to someone talk about the gospel for three hours and enjoy it. You already made that choice. You didn't have to say the sinner's prayer. You guys okay? Look at me with that tone. I mean, we've made it their little magic charm. You stand up. Well, no, no, you know, don't stand up. No. no um, who wants to give their life to Jesus? Everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. If you want to give your life to Jesus, raise your hand. <laughs> and then, then they will push you. They will go, okay, raise your hand. I see your hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Now. now everyone had their eyes closed. <coughs> so that they wouldn't be seen. Then the next step is, okay, stand up. Go like, I have to stand up. Then like five minutes later, then everybody, okay, open your eyes and shake someone's hand that's standing. And then they come forward, then they have to come forward and pray. That's, that's like, that sounds like a, like a trick going on there. And only once you pray the sinner's prayer are you now saved. It's funny because the Bible says, For Yeshua, he says, I, 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 do I so love the world that I send his only begotten son for whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. I can't look at you and say that you're saved because of what you say. Mm. 
Discernment in me will say, you're a son, and I can understand, and I can see it. But my judgment can't be, oh, you're saved because you said the sinner's prayer. I have multiple friends who said the sinner's prayer just because they're girlfriends. I was one of them. I was sitting there, I couldn't understand a word that guy was saying. I didn't even care what he was saying. I was so annoyed in this meeting, in a Rama church meeting, when I was a young kid, probably about 16 years old. And my girlfriend, she got up, and I was like, why are you getting up? Are you so annoying? <laughs> But, you know, it's the whole spiel of getting up, closing your heads, blah, 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 and then they come forward. But she, gets, she goes forward, and I'm like, wait, where are you going? Are you, I don't know where I am. You know, I mean, I'm an I'm a unsafe kid in the church. So she gets up, she walks forward, I just walk up behind her, and I did the sinner's prayer and everything. They even talk to us in the back. I was not saved. I did not get saved that day. I got saved about four years later. For real. For real. <laughs> Not, I didn't even say the sinner's prayer when I got born again. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, I'm not trying to make fun. I mean, it's just a little bit ridiculous. But we have to get to a point where we understand that it's a hard decision. It's something that happens inside. And uh, as we engage, we also get to engage with 24 elders. Now, I have said this before, I've taught on it before, the 24 elders is connected to the laws of Zion and the laws of Jerusalem. But they're also connected to the 24 living letters. And they are literally there to propel us, teach us, guide us. The laws of Jerusalem and the laws of, of Zion is key to your elevation because it's not the laws that we understand, don't do this, don't do that. It is light, whatever goes up has to come down. That's the type of laws that it is all about. How you guys doing? Okay. Engaging the men uh, in the white linen. Now, I want to say this, and it's not really part of my message. Any of the, no, Nothing I've said up to this point is part of my message. Mm. Help me, Jesus. But it kind of leads into it because we have to understand that because of the blood, we get to engage all these things. Because I'm seated in Christ, because I'm in Him, I get to engage that which, is, which I can't read, study, or meditate in the Word, although it's there. You know, nothing that I say, nothing that I preach or teach is not word-based. It might not be in the word as you understand it. It might not be in the scripture as you've read it or what, uh, as you've been taught. But it doesn't mean it's not in the scripture. Everything I say comes out of a, 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 a portion of Yahweh's word, whether it's written, spoken, or written, or it's a living. Yeah, teach. But we get to engage with these beings. We get to engage with... Uh, the fullness of Yahweh, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. And I love that. You know, I, I've, I've seen, I've heard people say this, and I might have made the, I might have done it myself. I say, you say Jesus, and you say Yahweh, as if Jesus is Jesus, and Yahweh is the Father. You know, Yahweh is the Godhead. That's right, Yahweh is Yeshua and Abba, and Ruach HaKadosh is Yahweh. And I, I don't say this because I read it in a book. It's something I've engaged and I've seen it myself. Yeah. When I go into the Yod Hey Vav Hey, it's not the Father, and I'm like, hey, where's Jesus? Oh, I have to go into the Yod Hey Shen Vav Hey to get Jesus in there too. And then I don't know how to get Holy Spirit in there. I have to do that whole another another thing to get Him in there. That's it's almost like a subconscious mentality we have. No, when I go into the Yod Hey Vav Hey, that is the full measure of the God that I serve in His full presence. That is a holy trinity. That is Abba. That is Yeshua. That is Ruach Hakodesh. Right. You guys okay? Yeah. 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 We engage all the cities within the kingdom of heaven. We engage the kingdom of heaven and all measures of it. We engage creation. Yeah. You know, when I, when I understand what the blood has done for me, my responsibility becomes more than just going to church on a Sunday. Yeah. My responsibility becomes more than just reading my Bible and praying every day. Ah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. So this blood of Yeshua has changed our lives. Sure yeah. did. He says this, he says, when I hear you cry for help, I throw this covering over, uh, over you like a mantle of light, mm. which lifts you up and out of your situation. It takes you into a realm of angelic protection. Yes. The angels respond to the blood because even though they see it as light, it has a special quality to it. 
it has been shed, it was shed in love and has the quality of being able to buy a life in redemption. When my blood covers a person, uh, bringing them into a, the new birth, it, has, it is able to take sin and swallow it up into a place of non-existence, never to be thought of nor remembered again. Never. This is the power of the blood. Yeah. I love that. It's always calling a people that will understand the value of what he did on that cross. Come on. Glory. You know, we can't just take one little portion and make our entire faith on it. Yeah. Salvation. I mean, don't, don't misunderstand me. Salvation is extremely important. I mean, salvation is important, but restoration is what brings salvation. Right. So I need to understand what I'm restored back into. That's, that's the whole process of growth. That's why the fivefold on the side is so extremely key and important to be in the right order. How are you guys doing? That's good. So when the angels see the blood, they recognize that that one is a citizen of their kingdom and as such deserves the ambassadorial protection of a citizen living in another kingdom yeah. of which they are not a part. Yes. You know, I, I get annoyed when I hear preachers say, we are off this world, in this world, but not off this world. Stay out of the world. Ah. The world's a chaotic state because sons that governs is not governing as sons. Yeah. All Yahweh is saying with that statement is remind yourself daily that you're an alien. That you're not an American or a Mexican or South African or European or English or Afrikaans or Dutch. You're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And the only reason my physical body is living here is because I can't get it into heaven yet. But every other part of me can go there. Matter of fact, my soul, my spirit, my soul can go there at night as a night watch. It can go in there every now and then as my spirit takes it in. But my spirit lives in that realm. Yes. Now we do this over and over again on a daily basis for it to become more real. That's why practice, practice, practice is what's key here. Yeah. But I have to get to the point where I understand that I come from out of my father's house with blueprints for what to do in creation. It's not about going to church on Sunday and going to church on Wednesday and, and praying in the morning and then pray a little bit at night and read my Bible every night and, or in the morning when I wake up and sit on my bed and pray a couple of prayers and for a couple of people and make myself feel good. And all that stuff's great. It's all great, but it's, it, I have to grow a little bit more. Yeah. I have to get to the place where I realize I'm in my father's house because I'm governing with him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm seated with him in heavenly places. I'm there to be co ed with him. He's called me to be his right hand man. When yes. I come from in the kingdom of heaven back into creation, I'm not coming into creation to go to church on a Sunday. No. I come into creation to govern as a king, to bring things back into place, to bring things back in position. Now you have to understand, you can't see my spirit coming back from in the kingdom of heaven into the earth. You can't see my, my spirit man walk in the face of the earth. And literally, um, in this day, today, I've been in more than five nations. I know how crazy that sounds. Where was I? I'm mostly in my room. <laughs> went to the shop, went to the gym, went to the shop again. That was annoying. You know, when you forget something, you literally, I go for one reason. And I buy a bunch of other stuff. And then I get home and I'm like, no way. <laughs> that one thing I was supposed to go buy, I didn't buy. And it was <laughs> eggs. I still don't have eggs. And that's the second time I forgot the damn eggs. <laughs> oh, my head was but I have to begin to understand, you know, although my day might not be as busy as everyone else's, although sometimes it is, because I mean, I work, I work five days a week like everyone else does. But the, the idea behind my day is although I might be lying on my bed or I might be sitting in my lounge, might be cooking some food, or wait, wait until my boys get back from lunch or go to the shop, or go to the gym. Whatever I'm doing, my spirit's engaging the realms of the earth. Yep, yep, yep. And as a spirit man, I come into the atmosphere because there's much that needs to be done. That's right. Yeah. Now, I'm doing all kinds of things in the spirit and my soul doesn't always know what I'm doing. That's why soaking is so key. That's why worship is so key. That's why taking a minute in your day or two minutes in your day, I say that because everybody wants to pray for three hours. And the more I pray, oh, no, 
I, I don't mind any of that, but you have to understand, I worship him as if I am the body and he is the head. Right. And I've said this so many times, me and my body is in communication with each other all day long. There is no separation. Right. There is no way I'm going to go on lunch, what you're doing. <laughs> I have to come with you, dude. I'm attached to you. You know, if you don't feel well in the morning, you know, your body has to still wake you up because your body's the one not feeling well. You know, that's why I have to understand this is the relationship he longs for, a company of people that, that understands the intimacy between body and the head. Yes, yes, Lord. The function is perfect. It works perfectly. Harmony is perfect. The conversation and communication is perfect. Mm -hmm. We know the move before the move is even made. And I've said this many times. I, you know, I don't have to tell my my brain. I don't have to tell my my, my body how to talk because I talk with my hands, and I don't always know why. This makes no sense. <laughs> but it's not something I oh let me do. When I say this word, you do that. When I say that word, you do this. It doesn't work like that. It's a function. It's the working together of my body. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yes, just, I'm just trying to. Yes, Lord. Bring some things across. But we have to understand that we are not of this world. We are from another dimensional realm. Right, that's right. And creation is longing for sons to come out of the Father's four faces into creation yes. with a governing pattern. Yes. Yes. I like it. Yes. Yes. They realize, they mention the, 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 the momentum of Gradual transformation from glory to greater glory. This is what has to be happening in your life on a daily basis. Daily. Continuous grace. I've, I've said growth. I've said this so many times. If you wake up tomorrow morning and you're not completely different than yesterday, you're backsliding. That's right. Grow down. You know, constant change. Constant change. I can't believe the same today as what I was, what did yesterday. That means I'm fast around today. I didn't see my father's other sides. <laughs> You guys, okay, that's, that's called koshek, that's going into the mystery, going into the secret place, into the darkness, into the black cloud. You understand, that's where his presence is. Right. The black cloud. Yeah. That's where he hides from us, because the full measure of his presence will kill you. But when I'm spirit, that doesn't count. When I'm spirit, I can go into every dimensional realm that opens up. Are you guys okay? Mm -hmm. Also, if you listen to this message, remind yourself that it's a spirit school and we've been going for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I don't explain myself. I don't go back seven years to bring everything to your liking, to your understanding. If you don't understand what I'm saying or you think that what I'm saying is not making sense, then go back. Everything is on YouTube. I started recording almost in the same month that I started this school, which means there's a thousand, eleven, there's eleven hundred hours of teaching on faith on YouTube for you to go listen to. Thank you, Gustav. <laughs> yeah. Eleven hundred hours. That's a lot of seeds. <laughs> the angels give respect to those who have been uh, bought with the very precious blood of their Lord and Master. The blood has buying power. It is a currency that is recognized in the world of the spirit. When my blood abides life, it is a transaction that cannot be denied by the underworld. Amen. 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 <laughs> That's why we have to understand, when I get born from above, I am covered in the blood. That's why I say, when I walk into a place, every demon has to leave. Amen. Now, do they not always? Why? Because there could be a gateway, it could be a doorway in my, in my bloodline, in my back, in my understanding, in my, in my lack, in my frustration, in my irritation that gives them the right to be there. And most of the time when we come into a room, those who are there with us have opened up gateways and doorways for other demonic entities to be attached to them. I don't always have the right to change all of that in, but I have the power to change the atmosphere of a room, no matter what demon's in that room. And my responsibility is to hear the accusations made and immediately go to the court and deal with those accusations. Not to bind and rebuke Satan. Because all I'm doing with, with that is moving them around. It's like when I tell my kids to go clean their room. Oh my God. Help me, Jesus. Because they don't clean it, they move stuff around. 
I'm not being like, I said, where's all the trash that I saw on the floor? Because you didn't put it in a bin. Oh no, we moved it over there, Dad. <laughs> Pick it up. Throw it away. So we have to deal with the demonic entities. We can't just move them around. And let me remind you, Satan is a dying, fading out devil that's more than 7,000 years old. And I know that he's much older than that, but we understand that there's some physical creation that's plus minus 7,000 years old. Or man on, on the earth, is, I don't know exactly how it works, but he's a dying, dying devil. He's a flesh devil. He doesn't have life added to him like we do, so he's literally dying daily. And we have to understand that when we come into the atmosphere of the earth, we are filled with glory and life. Which means that dimension of who we are takes from him immediately. That's why we don't breathe. That's why he so desperately wants a company of people to speak to him. Because my DNA is in my breath. And trust me, I, it is in my breath because I spit all over everything in front of you. It, it's in the air. When I speak to a demonic entity, all I'm doing is framing a space for him to live in. That's why when I come against them in the courts and deal with any legal right they have to be around me so that they're not around me. Yeah. Then I also, I know I'm jumping around tonight, but I cannot bind and rebuke a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit has the right to speak as a voice in your life because of what you've gone through. What you've done. The only way to get rid of a, 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 a familiar spirit is to shut it up. Every time it talks to you. Which means you have to know what the Father says about you. Because that voice will always say, but you're not really good enough. You know that, right? That's, that guy is holy. You're not really that holy. I mean, that guy has been a Christian for a really long time. He knows Jesus. You don't really know him. You know, you come into that church every Sunday. That pastor never greets you. Because, you know, you're not really exactly doing the things that you say you're doing. You know, he doesn't really like you all that much. That's familiar spirit. Yeah. So that's why we have to learn how to recognize that voice. And when it's there, what Ian, Ian does is something really nice. I love that. Now, me personally, I, I enjoy punching a punching bag. Kind of a warm up, a cool down. And when I do that, that's what I picture. I picture any and all familiar spirits that's active in my life <laughs> hanging on that punching bag. And I'm beating the living snot out of them. Now he does is he used to take his, uh, his uh, iron rod and his wife would hang carpets out to dry, you know, to, you know, to get beaten a little bit. So he's like, I'll go beat the carpets. Iron rod. You know, so eating the iron rod and the, and the mat and the carpet so you get all the dust out. And while he's doing that, he's picturing this familiar spirit that's speaking to him all the time. He's beating the snot out of him. And that's the only way to get rid of it. You have to shut the voice. Because you can't believe it all the time. Now, I mean, I say that, but it's an issue in my life. Hearing and listening to those voices. Oh, that's why this is happening. That's why this is happening. Of course, it's changed over the years, but it's still there. It's still a fight. It's still a war. It's still things you're dealing with every day. Oh, uh, that's, is that what happened? That's why it happened. No, that's not why it happened. That's a familiar voice. That's a familiar spirit speaking to you. Right. Shut that voice down. And it, it, it might, like, I say this because Ian's my mentor, but it, it took him a year to get rid of one specific familiar spirit that's speaking into his ear. A year, that's 365 days of waking up in the morning with that voice in your head. And then having to shut it down. Having to shut it down every single day for 365 days before it realized, okay, fine, I'll leave. And I say that because, you know, one of the names of the enemy is Beelzebub, which means to keep pushing against until it breaks open. Now, I know that's a perversion because that's who Yahweh is, but Yahweh doesn't push against, he waits. He waits for an opening because that's the heart of the Father. That's why you only have to believe for one second. Once you believe there's an opening and he can come in. Wow. But the enemy is different. He makes a hole. He presses in as much and as hard as he can until there's a forced place. That's why we have to shut him down. Shut him down. 
But we can't always just bind him. We can't always just rebuke him and cast him out and think that's going to shut him down. Because it doesn't always work like that. That's why I have to know my father. Because if I know him in full measure, then he opens up a dimension of revelation to me and I begin to realize and know what I need to do. Yeah. How you guys doing? Good. There's a mystery in all of this. The blood is able to take you through time uh, um, to a pre-existent place and time, such as Calvary, located as a seed within my body um, on the cross and connect you with the generations of Yahweh. And I love that because down the bloodline, I have met and seen so many crazy things. As a matter of fact, I've taught on this many times. And you have the right and the responsibility to go down your bloodline and to see where it's been cut off, where it's been stopped, where there's a lack of flow, where the murder and destruction and, and a frustration and anger and depression comes from, how to realign that by going back into your yesterday, dealing with your yesterday. So that you can come back into your today, but before you get to your today, you want to be in your tomorrow because you really want to live in your tomorrow today. <laughs> what the hell? Now that's another teaching. But we have to remind ourselves that we have the capacity as spirit beings to go into our yesterday. Amen. And to deal with the things that got us to think the way we do today. Deal with the things that got us to understand certain revelations that the Father is pouring into our hearts that's not right. To believe, to believe certain things of the Father and who He is because of belief systems that we had in our previous generations. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Father. You know, my entire generational bloodline is Dutch Reformed, which is an extremely religious church. Now, they've changed over the years very much, but there's a certain belief system. But as a baby, you have to be baptized. But you don't get baptized, you get sprinkled. But they call it a baptism. You know, that's just a mentality. They believe that babies go to hell when they die. They believe you can't play any other instrument in church but an organ. Help me, Jesus. You know, and I say that it's changed over the years. It has changed. And then some of them, I remember my friend, actually the man who led me to Jesus, he got fired because he spoke in tongues. He was one of the main pastors in the church. And he got fired because he started speaking in tongues. It's a little bit crazy, but it's, again, it's changed over the years. So I'm talking a bloodline that I was part of, a belief system, an extremely right. As a matter of fact, they used to preach this. Black people are not human beings. They are animals. Oh. <coughs> they had preached this in our city to such an extent that it had to be put to a stop. I don't even know where they get that from. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. As a matter of fact, it got so bad in a time that we could not... And I remember a friend of mine, a very powerful young man, a very, very powerful man. He was preaching in a building where the Dutch Reformed government was kind of in charge. And they told him that he's not allowed to speak in tongues in any way, fashion, or form, lay hands on people, or lead people to Jesus by the, the prayer that we believe in. Mm -hmm. And so he put out two policemen to arrest him immediately if he does any of those things. Now, as God would work it out, the two policemen got saved that night, and everyone in that meeting started speaking in tongues. Amen. I like that, right? And got born again, and it was a sinner's prayer. But it was very dominant, very, very demonic, very terrible. That's all part of, and it's not just the religious part, it's also part of a bloodline curse, being racist, being, um, it's called Afrikaner Boer. It's a mentality, it's a, a way of thinking. You know, and I had to deal with a lot of things in my bloodline. It's what we call the foot trackers, which I don't even know what is that word in English. Um, settlers. You know, they would walk through South Africa with uh, an ox and... Um, the what? Well, it wasn't just the ox. It was something that pulled the ox. Well, the, pull, the ox was pulling something. I don't remember what that would be. Anybody going once? Cart. Yeah, a cart. And they would go through it. It was just a crazy time. I guess it's, I don't know how it was here in America, but that's what my bloodline is connected to. And I had to go back into that bloodline to change my heart, to change the things that I believe, to change the things that I see. You know, my country, when I was a young man, was very racist, very violently racist. When Mandela came and took over, and my father worked on the mines, which was a good thing for me because a lot of his workers were, well, the black community, so we were, I was never raised as a racist. I never had racist tendencies to anyone with another color because that simply just sounded retarded to me because we are one race. Yeah. I'd be a racist if there's more one race. 
But you're not a different race because you have a darker skin or a lighter skin. We are the same race. Right. We're the same species. Right. You know, and I just had to, I had to change my ways because my friends would say, hey guys, it's a Friday night, it's 10 o'clock. You know, in South Africa when I was 16, 15, 16, before Mandela became president, there was a siren that would go off. And if you're a black man or a black woman, you had to leave the town immediately. If you don't, you get arrested or beaten up. Whoa. Wow. And that's what I kind of grew up in. Now, I said this again, my parents were never racist. I mean, they might have had racist tendencies, but really it wasn't so much racism, it was, it was a problem with culture and communication. But on the mines, I, I, that's what I love about the mine. If you work on the mine in South Africa, you have to speak Fanaga law, which is a made-up language that everybody has to learn so that there's 100% unity. So whether you're black, yellow, pink, green, or blue, if you work on the mine, you have to be able to speak Fanaga law. And I only know this, really, because my parents used to speak Fanaga law when they didn't want us to know what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what me and my ex-wife did when we didn't want to know, what they, we didn't want the kids to know what we said. We speak Afrikaans. Now I can't do that anymore. I have to speak to someone in tongues and I hope that they understand what I'm saying. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. So really, the Father just wants us to begin to understand the value and the power of the of the of the blood and the the glory that it brings, the restoration that it brings, the the way that it opens up. Everything for us. You know, what we teach up to this point, what we are releasing up to this point, for me to truly walk in it, for me to truly understand it, I have to understand what the blood did. Because it's the restoration. And in the restoration, all these gateways, all these doorways, all these realms, all these kingdoms, all these dimensional realms opens up for me. Because Yahweh wants to teach a company of people to go to a deeper, higher, wider place in Him. Yeah. We want to see more, understand more. It's not just about the physical things, because we're so fleshly. Now, I'm saying we flesh you, although you can be spraying in tongues and, and praying for the sick and seeing phenomenal signs, wonders and miracles, but we flesh you in the sense of everything happens on the earth here, everything happens to be right here. I can only go to heaven when I die. I can only be perfect once I go and die. I, everything has to happen once I've died. And it's like, well, if death is your savior, then go die, please. You know, but we're not. We have the blood of Yeshua that has yeah. restored me. I don't have to be yeah. earthly focused because I'm no longer living in the earth. I'm a kingdom man. I live in the kingdom of heaven. I sit in a, in a realm with my father where he's teaching me things I could not possibly have known. But it's not, more, it's not so much a teaching as what it is, a regaining of the knowledge I lost when I was bound to my soul in the kingdom of earth. Yeah. It's like a, people of, a company of people that stands up and begin to realize who we truly are. Right. Yes, Lord. You guys okay? Yeah. Yes. Father, we want to come before your throne right now and ask that as we have engaged with the blood, Lord, and I know that there's so many things that we have to deal with in our hearts and in our lives. There's so many things that stops us and blocks us from really truly moving on. There's so many things that we just cannot believe. There's so many things that, that we have to sit back and look at and think, is this truly you? How can this be? How is it so weird? How have we been taught so wrong for so long? It's not been wrong. We've not been taught wrong. We've only been taught a portion of the word. You've opened up more to us. You've allowed us to see more. There is a company of people that is diving in to everything you've revealed to us, Father, that is changing creation. And I ask, Father, that you'll take everyone in this room and those on Facebook and those on YouTube and whoever else engages on whatever platform I'm on, Father, I pray that you'll take your people into a new place. Lord, shift us, align us, propel us. Let's begin to see, perceive, and receive all the things that's ours and start walking in it in full measure. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, my King. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.